It's Bible time. <gasps> it's Bible time. It's Bible time. It's, it's Bible, Bible time. time. <gasps> it's Bible time with Aunt JJ. It's, it's Bible time with Aunt JJ. It's Bible time with Aunt JJ. That's me. Get your Bible if you have one, because it's time to study the Bible together. The Bible is God's word. God helped him write it so we can know for sure that everything in it is completely true. We learned that God chose to have a special relationship with the nation of Israel. God freed his people from slavery in Egypt. He gave the people instructions for how to live and how to worship him. At first, the people went to the tabernacle to worship God. But after the people settled in their land, King Solomon made a permanent house for God. At that point, the people went to the temple in Jerusalem to worship God. Even though Solomon was wise and built the temple, Solomon did not love God with all of his heart. Because of that, when Solomon's son Rehoboam became king, the nation of Israel split into two kingdoms. The northern kingdom is often called Israel, and the southern kingdom is often called Judah. We've also learned a lot about sin. Sin is anything that goes against God. Adam and Eve sinned when they disobeyed God in the garden, and ever since then, we all sin. We all think, say, and do things that go against God. One sin is idolatry. How well do you know the word idolatry? Show me with your fingers how well you know it. Give me a one if you don't know what it means or haven't heard it before. Give me a three if you think you know what it means. Give me a five if you are sure you know what it means and can explain it to someone. Okay, great. The word idolatry means worshiping anything other than God. This includes worshiping an object as God, and it also includes loving and valuing something more than we love and value God. The Lord is the only true God. He is the only one that deserves our worship. We should love Him and value Him more than anything and everything else. Some people actually have statues that they worship. The statues are idols, and worshiping them is idolatry. This was true in the time in history we are reading about, and this is true today. We read about how Aaron made a golden calf for the people to worship when Moses had gone to meet with God. That calf was an idol, and worshiping it was idolatry. That didn't go well for the people. Only God should be worshiped. Solomon also worshiped false gods. His many wives led him to commit idolatry. That's why the nation of Israel was split into two. Solomon's son, Rehoboam, became king of the southern kingdom of Judah, and Jeroboam became king of the northern kingdom of Israel. What do you think happened after the nation split in two? Let's read and find out. I'm going to read from 1 Kings chapters 12 and 13. First and 2 Kings come after 1 and 2 Samuel in the Old Testament. 1 Kings is a book of history. It records true things that really happened with real people. While I read, listen for what sin the people committed. Jump up when you hear the people thinking, saying, or doing something against God. Jeroboam thought, my kingdom still isn't secure. It could very easily go back to the royal family of David. Suppose the Israelites go up to Jerusalem to offer sacrifices at the Lord's temple. If they do, they will again decide to follow Rehoboam as their master. Then they'll kill me. They'll return to King Rehoboam. He is king of Judah. So King Jeroboam asked for advice. Then he made two golden statues that looked like calves. He said to the people, It's too hard for you to go up to Jerusalem. Israel, here are your gods who brought you up out of Egypt. He set one statue in Bethel. He set up the other one in Dan. What Jeroboam did was sinful, and it caused Israel to sin. The people came to worship the statue at Bethel. They went all the way to Dan to worship the statue that was there. The rest of 1 Kings chapter 12 records that Jeroboam also made new buildings for worship, anointed non-Levitical priests, and created a new feast for the people to celebrate. He basically made up his own religious system. Let's keep reading with chapter 13. A man of God went from Judah to Bethel. He had received a message from the Lord. He arrived at Bethel just as Jeroboam was standing by the altar to offer a sacrifice. The man cried out. He shouted a message from the Lord against the altar. The man of God said that a son named Josiah would be born into the family of King David. 
He would bring judgment on the priests who made sacrifices to false gods. That same day, the man of God spoke about a miraculous sign. He said, Here is the sign the Lord has announced. This altar will be broken into pieces. The ashes on it will be spilled out. The man of God announced that message against the altar at Bethel. When King Jeroboam heard it, he reached out his hand from the altar. He said, Grab him! But as he reached out his hand toward the man, it dried up. He couldn't even pull it back. Also, the altar broke into pieces. Its ashes spilled out. That happened in keeping with the miraculous sign the man of God had announced. He had received a message from the Lord. King Jeroboam spoke to the man of God. He said, Pray to the Lord your God for me. Pray that my hand will be as good as new again. So the man of God prayed to the Lord for the king, and the king's hand became as good as new. It was just as healthy as it had been before. How many times did you jump up because you heard me read about someone sinning? Unfortunately, we read about a lot of sin. Let's review the details of what happened by playing. Who did that? I'm going to say something that happened in the passage. You show me who did it by doing the correct motion. If the answer is God, stand up straight and point up. If the answer is Jeroboam, sit down. If the answer is the man of God, stand up with your arms down. If the answer is the people, stand with your arms up and turn around. Who was afraid the people would go to Jerusalem and not want him to be king anymore? Sit down, that was Jeroboam. He was afraid that if the people went to Jerusalem to worship God, like they were supposed to, they might decide to join the other kingdom and want to get rid of him. Jeroboam didn't mean to be afraid of losing his kingdom. God had already told him how to secure his reign. If Jeroboam followed God like David did, God would be with him and bless him. But Jeroboam didn't trust God's word. Who made up his own religion? Stay sitting down, Jeroboam did. Instead of trusting God to keep his kingdom secure, Jeroboam made new ways for the people to worship that did not include going to Jerusalem. He made golden calves and put them in two different cities with new places to worship in, different priests to lead them, and even a new feast to celebrate. That way, the people could worship the idols instead of going to Jerusalem. Jeroboam said that the golden calves were gods who had freed them from Egypt. But who actually freed the people from Egypt? Stand up and point up. God did. The one true living God freed the people from Egypt. Statues that looked like golden calves couldn't have freed the people from Egypt. Statues can't do anything at all. And there aren't multiple gods. There is only one true God. Who worshiped the statues? Stand up with your arms up and turn around, the people did. The people worshiped the idols, the golden calves. They followed their king and committed idolatry. Who had a message from God for King Jeroboam? Stand up with your arms down, the man of God did. God gave Jeroboam a message through the man of God. The priests who were offering sacrifices to the false gods were going to be judged. This would happen when someone named Josiah was born in David's family line. The message also included a sign. The altar would break into pieces and the ashes would spill out. The sign would prove that the message was true. Whose hand dried up and couldn't be moved? Sit down, Jeroboam's hand dried up and he couldn't even pull it back. He tried to grab the man of God because of the man's message. But God showed who was really in charge. It wasn't Jeroboam. God is in control, and He even controls the health of kings. Who broke the altar into pieces and spilled its ashes? Stand up and point up. God did. The verses didn't directly say God did it, but God's message said that the altar would break and the ashes would spill out. When that really happened, Jeroboam could know that the rest of the message would really happen too. It was God's message and God's power that provided a sign so they could know it was true. Great job playing. Who did that? Instead of trusting God's word, Jeroboam was afraid the people would want to go back to King Rehoboam. Because of his fear, he decided to make up a new religious system that was similar in some ways to how they had been worshiping God. 
but it was evil. Jeroboam led the people into idolatry. Instead of worshiping the one true God who was so faithful to them, they worshiped idols, statues of calves. A man of God came with a message from God. One day, a son named Josiah would be born in the family line of David, and then the false priests who led in worship of the idols would be judged. Jeroboam tried to grab the man of God, but instead he ended up asking the man to pray for him that God would heal his hand. Even after God graciously healed his hand, Jeroboam did not repent. God's message was true. Josiah was born about 300 years after this message was given. And while Josiah was king, the priests who were sacrificing to the false gods were judged. Now it's time for Eyes on Him, the part of our lesson when we focus on what the scriptures say about God. When you study the Bible, look for what the scripture reveals or shows about God. Then think about how that knowledge of God should impact, change, matter to your life. I see that God rules. God gets to decide how we worship Him. We don't get to just make up our own ways of worshiping Him. God tells us how we can worship Him. I see that God is merciful. Jeroboam deserved to die for leading his kingdom to worship idols. God made Jeroboam's hand sick, but then he healed it. Jeroboam definitely didn't deserve miraculous healing. He didn't even repent. He didn't turn from his sin. He kept on leading the people in idolatry. Judgment was coming, but not immediately. God is so incredibly merciful. I see that God can do anything. God can send a man to a king with a special message about the future. God can make someone sick. God can heal. God can split an altar whenever he wants. God can do anything. Nothing is impossible with God. What else does this passage show you about God? How should you live differently because of who God is? And now it's time for the Wheel of Wonder. The time in our lesson when we spin the wheel and wonder. What will our Wheel of Wonder question be today? It landed on orange. Our Wheel of Wonder question for today is, how do I know if I am worshiping an idol? That is a really important question. If there is an object, a thing, that you look to when you pray or that you count on to help you, you might be worshiping an idol. When we pray, we should pray to God, not to a statue or thing that was made by people. And we should depend on God, not things, to help us. But idols aren't just statues or things that people make. Idols can be anything we love and value more than God. Think about the thing or person you love the most. Is there something that you love more than God? Is there something that if you had to give it up to follow God, you wouldn't? If so, that thing might be an idol in your life. Idols can be things like money or clothes. Idols can be people or friendships. Idols can be activities like sports or other things we love to do. Sometimes a goal we have can become an idol in our lives. An idol is anything we love and value more than God. God knows that idols are bad for us, and so He has commanded us to only worship Him. Idols will always disappoint us. We are made to worship God, and He is the only one who deserves to be worshipped. Think about who or what you love and who or what you depend on. Ask God to help you see if there is an idol in your life. If so, repent and ask God to help you worship only Him. God allowed Jeroboam to become king, but Jeroboam cared more about being king than he cared about God. To keep the people from leaving his kingdom and going to Jerusalem to worship God, Jeroboam made up a new way for the people to worship idols that look like calves. What he did was evil and judgment was coming. The Lord is the only true God. The Lord is the only one who deserves our worship. May God help us to love and value Him more than anything else. Let's pray. Holy Father, You are gracious and bless us with many things. Please help us to love You more than we love the people, things, and talents You give us. You are the only one who deserves our worship. Please help us to worship only You. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, sweet friends, I love studying God's Word with you today. 
There's no better time than Bible time. And I hope you'll join me next time for Bible time with Aunt JJ. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and go to BibleTimeWithAuntJJ.com for free activities that go along with today's Bible study. It's Bible time with Aunt JJ.